okay so before continuing with this uh, topic about prototypes uh, i just wanted to uh, remind you that you received this morning a message from Luigi on Slack I hope you all have seen it where we uh, delayed a bit uh, for some days five more days uh, for the deadline of milestone number one because some especially some groups that have uh, some uh, issues with finding the people to interview and so on so we can give you some more time for that uh, so we rescheduled a bit uh, the activity of the um, um, of the different labs uh, and so the the deadline would be on the 28th of october which is then monday of the following week uh, and uh, on thursday in this, in this lab uh, you can work in the lab uh, on the uh, need finding uh, strategy interview so you can plan or ask questions or maybe you can show or uh, discuss about interme intermediate results so there will be no new assignment in this week's lab uh, will be a continuation of the assignment for last week uh, that will uh, uh, finish uh, on monday 28 uh, that will not be moved again okay for the second time just maybe one clarification that maybe is not clear for everybody or i didn't make it clear at the beginning um, about what happens if you miss a deadline or if what you submit is not good okay uh, basically nothing happens uh what the process we use is that uh, all the works that are turned in before the deadline will be reviewed by us and we can give you feedback that's it it doesn't influence at that moment what you do now doesn't influence in any way the final score okay uh, then and the day of the exam when you decide to come and uh, present the project uh, we will check what's on github at that date okay and we will uh, uh, score that content so if you go if you do it now and you do a good job and maybe we give you some feedback you correct it then it's okay, it's okay for it if we don't you, you if you don't submit it now well we don't even care or we don't realize or we there will be no consequences just you won't get our feedback right now so it's only at the risk of going in the wrong direction and we will uh, you can submit it later at any time before the exam okay so all the grading will happen at the exam so during uh, our, our philosophy is that during the course we are on our own we are on your side okay we're trying to help you in improving the uh, your work during the exam of course we'll be on the other side so we are being evaluating and judging and, uh, and so on hmm? so that's uh, so, so people don't get uh, too anxious about the deadline so if of course it's better if you follow but uh, there's no there are no uh, strong consequences you are uh, you are not losing points at the exams just for the fact that you are late with the with the deadline we hope everybody can follow of course okay the other news uh, that uh, i sent uh, yesterday or the day before is about where's that uh, the opportunity if you are interested in uh, usability and human computer interaction of the of, of, of about this event so every year there is this uh, world usability day which is a worldwide day actually uh, recurrence and uh, uh, in many cities they are developing different types of, of activities no? in particular in torino there will be this uh, uh, World Usability Day at the University of Torino, and uh, that will happen on the 14th of November, okay, here in Torino. And so we decided to uh, cancel the lab for that day, so that we are going there, of course, uh, uh, but uh, if any of you is, is interested in attending, there will be some talks in the morning, uh, and uh, it's, a, it's a free event. There will be, on the same day, there will also be some seminars, but they are then you need to pay to go there so probably it's not so interesting hmm? but if you are interested uh, we can go there uh, i need just to check because the location uh the cavalleria reale just uh, went on fire yesterday or the, the, the night before so i don't know whether it will be recovered by that date uh, or they will move uh, because in the 
uh, one part of that was uh, probably the, the 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 big room where the the aula mania where they taking the event was not affected by the fire but the whole uh, building is being uh, closed by the authorities to do investigation so okay le let's be fuzzy about the location but the day should be there hmm? should be fixed okay so uh, we will uh, we'll give you more details later uh, of course this uh, lab uh, will be recovered a week after where we will do a three hours lab instead of a one, one and a half an hour okay so that's just practical issues okay end of practicalities let's go back to our prototypes hmm? open okay so uh, we discussed last time last week uh, the low level uh, low uh, fidelity prototypes uh, you remember about uh, uh, paper prototypes mainly that could return could be also used uh, to create video presentations we call them video prototypes where not only the prototype but also a way of interacting with it was presented hmm? but basically paper prototypes were the uh, the main topic there if we proceed into the design process we can move towards a more uh, uh, hi higher fidelity eh? and uh, there is this level of medium with the so-called somebody call them medium fidelity prototypes uh, that are better than handwritten paper ones but still less complex and less complete than real application so it's something that you do with a computer so it will be a software that is able to show the user interface maybe static pages maybe with a little little bit uh, of interaction uh, mo in most of the cases that will be it will be fake interaction so not real code but predefined paths or predefined areas to click on and um, uh, there are, okay we'll see some example of them uh, the idea is that uh, the layer the graphical the presentation the appearance is better than a paper prototype because in any way you are doing that with a screen with a computer is more repeatable and so on it may also depending on the graphical element that, that you that you use uh, it can be uh, with a medium or a higher fidelity so maybe you're using the actual icons or just a placeholder for an icon it depends uh, so it becomes better what you are losing keep in mind that you are losing some depth in the analysis because when you are with a paper prototype there will be we saw that there's one person that will switch that will you know, simulate the computer and that person understands what's happening understand the users and so knows what to do hmm? and some interpreter also the the needs or the desire of the user or the actions of the user once you have uh, some predefined screens they cannot change so uh, the depth of the interaction is lost uh, because you already have some predefined uh, let's say templates or predefined paths uh, that and the user will only be able to use those so if in a paper prototype you discover that the user is clicking in the wrong position and you try to see how it reacts when it sees the the response of the system that you can simulate on the fly in this case if you are clicking on the wrong position nothing happens because you didn't anticipate that hmm? you didn't think that that could be a, a, a cause for errors so the the usual rules still ap applies uh, start with lower fidelity so that you can discover the main issues the most important problems correct them and then move to more f uh, say sophisticated prototypes only if and when the simple problems are already being solved by the low cost uh, methods uh, these medium fidelity are sometimes called uh, mock-ups uh, or wireframes due to the their appearance uh, uh, usually you are just drawing like uh, the frame around the interface and not the interface itself uh, it can be a single screen so just one interface because you are trying to understand the organization of items inside a single page or could be better a sequence of pages if you are interested in the flow of interaction from page to page uh, by the user uh, usually it's a 
computer generated picture but in many cases the style uh, used for drawing them is not too precise but uh, it has some degree of fuzziness of waviness of impreciseness in the drawing okay so it reminds a bit uh, hand drawings just to as we already discussed to put the user in the frame mind uh, uh, saying okay uh, this is just uh, an example this is just an idea to be commented is not something that should uh, look like too much uh, to the final uh, version hmm? and so usually these uh, wireframes are also black and white drawings even if your website would be fancy uh, but uh, at this stage we still don't care okay um, the tools used for creating mockups uh, usually are only are only able uh, to create static pages or static drawings they're not even pages that these tools don't even have the notion of a page because they're just drawing tools with some widget predefined uh, that can simplify uh, the drawing of, of the of the interface hmm? but uh, again uh, we can with with a proper drawing uh, maybe the the frame of the tablet uh, the the screen size the, uh, maybe the um, the the main buttons of a browser so it can communicate the user which kind of devices they are supposed to to be used hmm? so let we see some examples hmm? so for example it's possible to start with the wireframe interface uh, suggesting a website or suggesting a desktop application or suggesting a mobile application just by changing the frame so it's a very simplified frame doesn't have all the details uh, but uh, just by a f the first sight the user already uh, draws in all the background information they have about uh, desktop applications probably so they know that there are some kind of gestures clicks conventions that apply for desktop that are different from those in the web in the web we have the back and forward arrows in desktop application we don't have them so the navigation will be different hmm? so the user is already prepared when you when it sees the the frame in which you are drawing the interface it's the same that you can do also on paper hmm? it's the same idea uh, and uh, inside these frames you will put some interface elements uh, some text uh, some uh, hints uh, at maybe some navigation interface this is a text area with a clear button with a function of searching this is a button this is an, will be an image or something like that this will be a title hmm? so even if there is no real content here it's just a sketch it already gives us some pretty clear uh, idea of the organization of the spaces it's more precise than uh, paper prototypes for example usually these uh, uh, tools for writing mockups uh, in this case i i, I, I grabbed a, um, a screenshot from a, a website called mockups uh, written with a q um, that already gives you many interface elements that you can just drag and drop into your page and one advantage is that this uh, library already knows about uh, the main uh, widgets that are available for the different operating systems knows about their relative size so if you drag three buttons that will be exactly of the same size and the size of the button relative to the size of the title will be more or less the same of course you can resize them but by default uh, it will be something which is also with them with sizes dimensions and uh, uh, spacing will be similar to what you will find in a real application something that in paper prototypes you cannot you cannot always get right okay so you will draw something like this so it's a computer version of the paper prototype and uh, the advantage is that in in some cases some of the buttons some of the interface elements will be active so there's not code written at this at this point what you will do is to prepare many static pages and usually define some links some hot 
points in the interface and okay if the user clicks here then switch to page number 37 so there's no notion of business logic in this uh, uh, application a, a set of images that can be linked uh, in meaningful ways if you prepare all the versions and then uh, pr program the links uh, to the different pages so you can actually the user can actually see comment and click on the interface and see what happens in those cases that of course you have prepared beforehand hmm? so it's less versatile than a paper prototype a paper prototype can, can you can dynamically adjust to what the user is doing the user will go back or not uh, or will do the a strange action so you can try to simulate them that in this case no hmm? you, you cannot um, usually you have a set of uh, library elements that you can use so frames uh, uh, widgets buttons uh, tables uh, so all the main uh, design elements that are also simplified in the way you can insert them so imagine a table hmm, like this or uh, a menu or a, a link list a um, bullet list okay if you want to create that in uh, whatever HTML or markdown or whatever you need a lot of syntax in these cases of course you can just drag and drop the, the table the default one with some content just if you just want to say here i want a table or you can customize the content with a sim with the syntax which is very very simple it's not precise you cannot create any type of table or any type of list but it's very quick to write the most important one we'll see an example in a moment so uh you can use some program or also you can use just some drawing program you can do that in powerpoint why not in powerpoint you can put an image and then create links between the pages so you go into powerpoint presentation and people will start interacting with what looks like a black and white version of a, of a website and so to make it more or less realistic you can also use some realistic stances. you see that the difference between this which is a low fidelity table a low fidelity button or menu compared to the real one so it depends on you whether you want to promise more or be more precise of, of course here you are, you need to be more precise on the alignment on the spacing because these are these are actual sizes hmm? in this case they are just hypo hypothetical sizes hypothetical shapes uh, uh, that can be redesigned so depends on you how how much uh, you want to convey the precision hmm? so i rec i recorded here some of the tools uh, that can be used most of them are uh, online tools and there was also one firefox ex extension that was called the pencil which is also used but uh, it's uh, several years that that has not been developed anymore uh, so usually uh, one of these uh, can be used uh, very easy I, I, all of them I, I, I only selected those that have a free plan for for testing okay and just to show you an example uh, we were using balsamic uh, in um, in a course that i i had uh, in the previous year for uh, management students uh, where we were developing the um, mockups uh, with balsamic and ju just to instead of starting from scratch just to give you a, a flavor of uh, of uh, how they look okay so this is uh, an example of um, a mock-up for uh, an exercise that we did uh, during that course where different pages uh, were prepared and you can navigate through these pages should be a launch button here launch prototype it says that the little arrow and will open me a page uh, okay browser inside the browser but uh, let's for uh, let's try to abstract that okay let's let's hide the normal browser and so it can navigate this interface you see it's uh, wavy lines so it looks like handwritten looks like incomplete and it says uh, there's a menu with some items and some of them can be clicked for example if i click here 
I go to another page uh, where I, I, I pull down from the menu a list uh, and then there's the list of the different items I can click on some of these items I go to the detail behind this so this was something about vaccines so I selected one person and then here are the list of vaccines of that person and in some case there are some comments so I can show them no it's not clickable okay uh, you can close it and you can go back uh, and uh, there may be a, a other uh, other actions there for example uh, this other page uh, you can go back to the home page click in there and so on mm -hmm. so it's you see it's not an application it doesn't have any logic it's just some screens uh, of course I right now I was clicking randomly uh, how you should are you you should uh, use this kind of tools uh, are in a task driven setting so you must uh, you prepare a prototype like this for exploring a given task and then then you ask the user to carry on the task on this interface so for example uh, check the vaccines of a given child and see where they're clicking whether they're following the right path or whether uh, they're misled or they don't understand some uh, some elements or they, don't, uh, they, they they get stuck and they don't know how to go forward how to come back and so on hmm? and uh, so uh, the, the user should probably know already or should be driven in which can be clicked and many other elements that will not be clickable uh, for example this modify button is not available while the close or termination button is uh, is has been programmed mm -hmm. um, this can also be a problem because in some way uh, the user could be seeking for what is clickable and what is not clickable so you I move the mouse sometimes the mouse turns into a hand say okay you can click here but you cannot click there for example so it's a bit dangerous also because uh, you are the user is some time seeking for the places that can be clicked or not ideally an interface would tell that all of these buttons can be clicked and the user will select which one hmm? but in this case uh, you well, the user you should avoid the user doing this kind of game finding where can which are the points that can be clicked so it's always better in this case to ask the user where would you click and then let them click actually because the choice will be based only on the understanding of the, of the interface and not on the actual button of course you could also implement something or make all the buttons uh, uh, active uh, by maybe pointing to fake pages or empty pages or whatever just to 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 avoid this kind of, uh, of illusion uh, what you could also do is to foresee some kind of errors so uh, after the first time uh, okay you check the list uh, at the second stage uh, you can say okay well what happens if the list uh, of uh, uh, of children is empty uh, so different stuff would happen so in normally if I check the list I have the list of the children and then I will select the children to see the details but if only if no children are, are available what happens so I prepare some error actions maybe at the first round I won't show them to the user but then they are ready okay let's see what happens if you after I understood that the user knows to click uh, on check the list of the children what happens if there are no children so in this case I it's a fake action it's outside the interface so, okay let's simulate the fact that you clicked on this item and then there are no children available and in this case you get an error page hmm? so you can prepare the normal ex execution path the normal interaction path but also some anomalies and of course you need a way to trigger these anomalies in a real interface there will be a database that will tell you there are children or not in this case you don't have any database so you can in a way 
prepare different versions of a version with some variations with some uh, side tricks in order to let the user explore different paths hmm? okay so uh, you can of course observe or interview a user while he's trying to use this interface try to execute the task hmm? it looks more realistic because you're using a mouse or you're using your finger where when using the uh, the prototype uh, is better than a, in some way it feels more natural than a paper prototype to the user hmm? the the real problem is that it's more constrained hmm? as we already discussed um, okay there was also uh, I, uh, oh, okay here I was also to show you the interface for creating this stuff I need to log in because just visualize the, the project was saved as a public project so everybody can see it but for modifying it okay it was more or less here okay the interface for creating that Okay, so we have an edit. No, please. <coughs> no, I I won't show you because I don't have Flash uh, installed here. And uh, I tried it on, on the other computer that I have in the office, and it worked. You need, in this case, you need Flash to to go to the edit page. We'll uh, we we'll do it later, okay? On uh, after I installed everything is needed. Mm. Okay, so in this case, you see that in this project there were many more uh, screens that we didn't reach r right now uh for entering dates uh, for selecting names and so on it's all fake nothing is moving okay if if there's a combo box here it will not open if you click on it if there's a calendar it will not open or close it's just a picture okay but you can start thinking about okay what is the best way of of uh, uh, getting a date what is the best way of asking for some property how big should the text be and so on hmm? And also, this text is not a real text, it's just placeholders. Mm -hmm. So in some cases, you want to write a real text in some other, maybe or the name of the application was not already decided. So the, the main title. So we left it blank. Just, okay, here we will have a title. We don't know what, what, what is this title right now, and we don't want to draw your attention to the particular word. So instead of writing test one, two, three, it's better not to write anything, just to give the hint that there's something there huh? or or with the with the pictures if you don't have a realistic pictures picture just put a placeholder the user will understand okay so it's better to put a, an empty placeholder than something which is wrong or which is misleading because then the user will think that that's that is your choice so here you can only you should only put the information that you are sure about and you want the user to interact with and you want to understand how the user um, interacts and uh, and understands this is another example is a much older one so before they invented the uh, uh, smart watches there was a concept uh, for a uh, smart watch uh, and this is a prototype that was made in powerpoint so just a drawing in powerpoint with some uh, uh, buttons and uh, some uh, maybe you want to click to, to call a new number so you click here and then in the in the screen uh, some numbers will appear and you compose numbers and these buttons actually will send you back there but there are also some other side buttons that simulate external events so what happened in this case uh, it's a uh, more interactive application than a website in a website nothing happens if you are not clicking if the user is not active then the interface will stand still hmm? 
in a smartwatch or a smartphone okay some part of the interaction is initiated by the user but some part of the uh, interaction is triggered by the device so i may be looking on my blank screen and then this telephone starts ringing so it's not oops uh, it's not a, a, um, an action that i should perform but a reaction at this point i should react in some way to a trigger that came from the device and so uh, the purpose of these buttons is to trigger this section so uh, this is the normal screen the lock screen of your uh, watch what happens if somebody is calling you so the experimenter or the user clicks on this fake button does it's not part of the you see that it's it's not part of the device and so it will move to a screen where the caller number is shown and then maybe there will be an accept or reject button some be behind that uh, so you simulate in the fact that some external events started an interaction with you and you need to respond to that interaction hmm? uh, it may also be in this case we have a clear uh, motivation there are different type of external events maybe the user should not see them or should not see uh, for example the difference between a call coming from a person in your contact list and a person coming uh, a call from an unknown number will be of course if you're if the person is the contact list you show the name maybe you show also the pictures in the other case you should just the number and maybe the location if there's some location tracking i say okay this person is coming from uh india or uh uh, Aosta, whatever. No? So the the, pro the 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 source of the number. If you want to check whether the user is recognizing these two conditions, you should probably have two buttons without the, the clear labels. Because okay, okay, let's let's try this, and then you show you the call from a known contact. Let's try this, and so the call from an unknown contact. If the user already reads this difference, it's already in the frame of mind of knowing what will happen next. Hmm. So either these buttons would be um, void, empty, blank. You know what they do. Or they will not be part of the same screen. Okay, so maybe you don't show them. The user only sees this and only the experimenter shows them in a very advanced setup you could you could take a piece of paper and cover half of the screen for the user so the part of the screen the user sees is only the left one and you can also see this one so you, you don't need anything sophisticated hmm? and and with this you can play uh, some scenarios hmm? and you see that if you need to change something just a matter of opening powerpoint and moving this button from the left to the right or whatever if the some kind of interaction is not uh, is not valid uh, of course this is not real interaction uh, usually the pro the wireframing tools uh, only let you click on the element so and uh, many other interactions like uh, swipe open and close uh, uh, um, expand and compact and so on will be lost pinch zoom all the new kind of interactions are very difficult to create in a static prototype like this so it's only a, a little part of interaction it will be useful for checking the understanding of the user interface elements uh, is not useful at all to understand the dynamics uh, the practical it, the practical usage of the interface okay the speed uh, the precision and so on hmm. all the widgets so the, the calendar the menu the drop downs are not active they will not open or and close in, as in the real case hmm. uh, and this the risk of uh, like we said before that the tester was trying to hunt for the hotspot so finding which what can be clicked in this uh, uh, in this page you know there's a lot of games like uh, escape room games no, in mobiles where there's a location and you can only click on some elements so part of the game is discovering where to click okay but then you see that 
the nice and the difficult part of the game is finding which are the places and then trying to think what they do mm -hmm. but this is the opposite of usability in that case it's non-usable by design because only some elements and you don't know why because they are not marked in any way can be interactive and you don't know what they do mm -hmm. that's the game uh, in a user interface we should drive strive for uh, the exact opposite uh, side huh? so having something that is easy to recognize and uh, you you can easily anticipate what, the, what it does so you should try in the interaction with the, your, your users uh, to avoid if they or to you know uh, warn them not to go in the, into this modality because otherwise the results will not be uh, useful at all hmm? okay and if we if we move towards more sophisticated prototype uh, we can go to the real hi high fidelity prototypes or digital mockups uh, as like said in some way so they really look like the f the, uh, the the finished application hmm? so maybe you, you try to draw them in um, as finished looking way as possible so people at first sight should not tell the difference between the prototype and the final application try to use the real fonts the real sizes the real colors the real shades and so on so you can also test all the appearance and layouts and so on um, you can use some prototyping tools that are actually design tools that uh, this is the next generation after uh, wireframing you can really put some real elements uh, and in this case they again the dynamic of the application will miss will be missing only the layout and some clicking capability or maybe you can also use some first code real application code of course without probably without all the back-end issues or without all the database just the interaction part okay and uh, but maybe in some cases could be fa even faster uh, to use real html for example since you have to do it anyway you already have a lot of information because you already tested the paper prototype maybe the wireframe so you already you already have in your mind a, a very clear idea of what the interface is like at least the structural interface then you want to test the details the spacing the fonts the color the contrast and so on at that point it's even possible to create um, a skeleton of the html page with some elements inside and try to use it hmm? of course if you are thinking about something that should be with, with precise colors with precise pixels with precise sa sizes and so on or even something in real code or it will be much more expensive of course it's not hours it's not days it's maybe weeks to create hmm? and um, and the the risk here is uh, to spend too much focus too much time or to focus too much onto the graphical design rather than the interaction design okay sooner or later you, we will have to do this real graphical design so maybe you want a designer for doing that not a programmer hmm? so if the, he, at this point you are starting to get feedback uh, from the interaction side so all the usability issues and also from the design side you are putting color you're putting fonts you know you, you users always have an opinion about colors okay so you, you want uh, probably to avoid uh, no, drawing the user to that uh, direction and there are also tools for doing that uh, this is an example i mentioned before the pencil tool that could be it's a bit old but uh, could be used for creating um, wireframes but also high fidelity prototypes and you have a lot of uh, uh, additional elements for not just for the widgets uh, in, in wireframes you mainly have the widgets the element the menu the buttons and so on in this case you also have the, all the layout elements uh, for example all the bootstrap uh, elements that come with the bootstrap CSS library that gives you all the um, the size the grid sizing the the alignment uh, the boxes uh, uh, and, and the frames and so on huh? 
all the uh, badges so the main shapes that are not just the, the single widget single control but also all the layout system the spa spacing system and so on can be drawn with these kind of tools uh, you can imagine the time needed in case one and case two in a wireframe and in a real here you, you really must be precise this is shadow how much is this transparency 40 percent 50 percent let's try it is this white uh, different enough from this green to make these letters leg uh, readable or not so there's a lot of design decision at this point uh, that are uh, and sooner or later we must take that into, a, into account and this is the time so when you are ready you already know what is the content what is the main layout uh, and you want to go into the visuals hmm? uh, so in this case uh, you we you, we create a high level prototype a fidelity prototype if you want to reason about mainly the screen layout hmm? so uh, it's very nice but where does the attention of the user go in this page does the user is the user attracted with what we want to attract him or not I see for example this red button here it's very scary so it's the first first element that they would see in this page before reading this before finding the, the the website so is this is this what i want maybe yes maybe no but this is something that we we can test with here the size the core the position of this button is really catching uh, in this case maybe it's distracting hmm? this text probably will be difficult to read hmm? so all the readability all the graphical say, aspects can the user find the important elements are the fonts well chosen are the icons well chosen in this case we don't have any icons here or here uh, 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 can the user understand what these icons mean and so on hmm? and uh, we can also try in some cases uh, to e if this uh, will not be just a drawing program but we also write some real code we can also make it dynamic so maybe some message will appear will change a notification will appear and so on so you can also test how the user re is reacting to the changes in the user interface so not just the static interpretation uh, you remember the gulf of evaluation i see something i try to understand what it means it can be static or can be dynamic so the what i'm seeing is changing so do do i understand why it's changing what is trying to tell me hmm? and so it, it can be done in this case um, we are real spacing here the actual spacing here so we can also check whether some buttons are too close to each other so there's the risk of clicking one instead of the other uh, with the, if, if you don't have enough precision if the text is uh, big enough to read uh, or if the button is too too small to click uh, so how many times you try to select a checkbox just you just didn't find it uh, the, the right spot okay especially on mobile and so all these more detailed issues hmm? there are no questions here about the main understanding of the flow or the execution because it's something that we, we should already have solved before hmm? um Okay, if you want, uh, there's this nice video, I, I won't show it now, but uh, if you want to see it, at least the, f the first minutes, uh, there's a talk from a Apple Design uh, where they show, uh, they are showing a new application. Okay, so it's uh, actually a marketing video, like a video prototype, but it's, very, it's a, a finished application. Apple is designing this new application that, and we will see that. And then you discover that it's not a real application, it's just a prototype. So it's everything everything is fake there from the video from the customer from the application and so and then they will explain how they do that huh? how they build that but the first the beginning of the video is just if as a user you see that you really believe it's for real hmm? and so you can try to interact with it and see it and comment it as it were real so in the first three minutes uh, you just see a new application and then they will it's a long video they will explain you how they did it it gets less interesting there okay here also i collected some of the tools uh, I, that uh, are usable 
there's one uh, i didn't report here uh, because it's not a web-based uh, people using a mac uh, usually the designers usually for this stage use a tool called sketch hmm? which is very famous on the on the mac community and uh, these are web-based alternatives uh, ones that they see uh, here mentioned a lot is uh, figma uh, they use it a lot hmm? but all of them pro more, more or less uh, uh they are they are a bit different this one for testing sequences of, of pages this figma is more on the design of the single page uh, but you can have have a look at, at them and choose the one that mm, it's uh, it's uh, easier for you hmm? okay so these are tools that we use uh, for user testing so later on we will test or we want to test our prototypes with the users depending on the kind of information that we want to extract uh, we will choose a different tool okay there was something before in the lab complaining that we learned many techniques uh, and then in the assignment in the milestone we didn't use all of them hmm? of course <laughs> there are time reasons uh, and also we try to uh, these techniques are a tool set a set of possible tools uh, and you choose the one that is most useful in a given context no? depending on what you want to to, to check in the course we cannot do a real pro uh, design with all the details with all the steps uh, there are some nice uh, stre strength techniques i want to tell you these white of uh, uh, techniques uh, which is the ultimate uh, faking technology or methodology uh, you want to show a user a very advanced user interface <coughs> something very fancy very complicated very dynamic okay uh, but to show all the dynamic issues all the capabilities of the system or whatever you need first to build the system so how to show to demo a real system with all the features to the user if you don't have the system you fake it uh, so you want to show an application that is seems really complete so the user interface is finalized the algorithms are finalized and also maybe something that we still didn't have time to implement or think we want to show it to the user without actually writing the code except some dumb prototype so how to turn a high level high fidelity prototype into a real application you can implement it or you can fake it remember the the story of the mechanical turk there was this tale that uh, in the in turkey so that was a, a turk uh, there was a, a machine a robot that was able to play chess so in these fairs in these markets there was this big box uh, the drawing is not so clear there's this big, big box on which are chess table on top of it and then there's this mechanical soldier or, or wizard or whatever okay so it was a statue basically a mannequin that with the capability with their hands uh, to move the pieces of the chessboard and you saw that you could open that and you saw a lot of gears mechanisms so it was a mechanical device and people went there and challenged the Turk in the chess game and the mechanical Turk so this machine in most of the cases would win the game so the machine would win uh, the, the challenges from in the in these markets and so on hmm? and uh, people were really impressed by the capability of this machine to play chess and to win the games and so on except that nothing of this was true because there was a very small person very able chess player that was hiding behind that and was actually pulling some levers and some strings to move the state the, the mannequin of the of the mechanical turk and he was really playing the game but it was invisible to the final user that really believed that it was this machine playing the game understanding the moves uh, seeing what you were moving and um, uh, moving there and uh, making their moves and so on 
okay so this is the idea having something that really seems the real thing but it's not behind the curtain there is some human simulator that will simulate the responses of the system uh, so it's a sort of a man behind the curtain mm? so the the literature calls it wizard of oz instead of the uh, mechanical turk but <laughs> it's an, a different tale but the, the idea is the same it's a software simulation with a human in the loop mm? so it's not all software some of it will be software and some of it will be a human which is as invisible as possible mm, to the experimenter um, another example where this happened if, is uh, there were some um, initial studies about uh, uh, voice interfaces so several years ago the voice recognition technology was not good as it is today was very unreliable but people wanted to start experimenting what voice application would look like in the future so they created devices that the user could speak into and see these devices to respond to user actions demand uh, uh, queries and whatever but they could not implement them because the technology was not ready yet and so what they did is actually to put a person in the other room that according to the request of the user this person heard the, the request and then typed in the answer or made some changes in the interface happen so in that case it was uh, replacing some technology that was not ready yet was not developed yet so we could test something even if it's in the future <coughs> of course we will not build uh, the real application but for study purposes for understanding the interaction is a very powerful technique hmm? uh, another aspect is uh, uh, learning interfaces so websites that learn from your habits and so they will adapt to your preferences to your uh, history or whatever so today we are used to those technologies like you know you go to Amazon there's a recommender system they will show you what you are most likely to, to buy or to want to explore in that moment and so on. okay but the algorithmic point of view of this kind of uh, recommender system are very complex you need a lot of data a lot of training and whatever so what if you want to test the recommender interface to a real user and you want to put or to show some recommendation that you know that will be interesting to him okay you can have a person behind the curtain that will select uh, what kind of recommendation to to use so actually usually uh, the wizard is hidden in some cases it may be visible but uh, just for honest behavior at at least at the end of the experiment you should really uh, reveal okay but the, there was this guy liking candid cameras okay at the end they will also always tell you well this was a joke or, or this was uh, a simulation hmm? Uh, from the um, uh, point of view of the implementation how to create a wizard of all simulation prototype well of course you need to define which kind of tasks but this is the real uh, constant here all the prototyping techniques are task driven so we want to test a, a given task you create some interface and you must realize that the website or the application will be used by two users at the same time the tester the user the experimenter and the wizard behind the curtain because the wizard should be able to see what the user is doing and to control change the behavior or the content of the application in real time so you must have some hooks in your software saying okay at this point uh, the content of this box uh, is not determined by the the prototype the software you write but it will be determined by something that the wizard is typing on its computer behind the curtain so it's it's a bit more complex huh? because there's a collaborative interface where okay one of the co collaborators is hidden but actually what happens in the interface is the combination of the user actions and the wizard inputs of course the wizard should probably only in um, give input for some specific aspects you cannot overload 
this uh, person to to complete all of that in all everything in real time because it should be real time because otherwise the user will understand that something wrong is happening mm -hmm. and so you need an inter a back office interface for the wizard that will give the right input at the right times and uh, we should uh, uh, train the wizard to behave like the algorithm we are trying to implement so it's not so easy because the user should not behave with his own intelligence it should be a bit dumber we should behave with the level of intelligence of the kind of algorithm or the kind of system we are trying to simulate so some choices okay can are possible and he will make these choices some something more sophisticated should be left out so the the wizard should not make choices that the system you are trying to think or to design will not be able to do even with the new technologies so usually this wizard has some or it's not it's not a, a random person will be one of the team that knows uh, and we already know ac the, the, according to the task we mostly know what what will happen and what kind of responses you could give uh, uh, depending on the uh, the yeah i remember a video i saw a video where there's one person that's trying to call a telephone service with the voice responder that will allow them to select uh, i don't remember whether it's the movie to a movie to, a movie to watch okay and the the person who was sure he was talking to a machine but on the other hand there was a friend actually uh, uh, playing jokes on him uh, responding as the machine were and uh, so you, you find the situation uh, very often okay it requires a bit of setup of course but then you can really test something that is not really happening compared to really implementing the application of course it's cheaper mm -hmm. and where what do you use that well it's a very it's a it has a very wide spectrum of, applic of applicability uh, it, you could really touch the final product so you can have a, a final have a product which is really nearly final and you want to start testing maybe before it's really completed but all of the all the interface all the some of the algorithms also are already defined and you want just to start testing it by faking with the wizard techniques the parts that are missing or you could also start uh, much uh, earlier usually at the stage where you're starting to develop uh, digital mockups so high level prototypes it doesn't work of course well with paper prototyping or something like that because really the, the game doesn't uh, doesn't hold okay you really need something that should be should pass for the real thing hmm? should be credible enough as a real thing and uh, well, of course uh, again it's uh, it's also cheap uh, if you want to program something as an interactive prototype uh, ask yourself uh, uh, it, is it cheaper or faster to write the code or just to make a person behind the curtain and uh, in a way it's it's some some sometimes it reminds of paper prototyping huh? where you see that you have the paper and you have the operator that will change the paper so the kind of dynamics is more or less the same you there's somebody which is simulating the behavior of the system the goal is different hmm? because in paper prototyping you are focusing on the main content on the interface uh, and here we have something that will is not just the interface but it's the, the full system with all the, the layout and all the the graphics and so on and all the chess moves and so on and uh, since the difficult part of the algorithm is not implemented in code but is simulated by a human it's very easy to change it to test different types of uh, okay let's try to be more intelligent try to respond faster try to give two replies instead of once say what do you mean by and you give two options it's very easy you just change let's say the protocol by which the wizard behaves and you can test even very wide variations of the system if you if you need with without a lot of preparation like you had to prepare many different mockups uh, or uh, many different paper prototypes or very different uh, screens and so on or or coding many different alternatives that part will be simulated by a human that will 
change or adapt uh, his behavior or her behavior uh, dynamically hmm? um, in that case uh, okay then this is something that we already say that uh, something that is difficult or not yet known how to build um, and of course uh, there's also some risks because okay you try to develop the speech interface uh, with the and test it with a wiser of us uh, technique uh, but then you will discover that you imagine that next year speech recognition would have would reach some quality and it won't uh, so you are in some way betting that the technology will develop as fast as you think Okay, okay, you're simulating today's technology, it's okay, there's no risk. If I'm trying to simulate tomorrow's technology, that I'm betting that really tomorrow that technology will behave in that way. Mm -hmm. So you should be always be very realistic. Mm -hmm. uh, also, um, the wizard is too intelligent, and usually it doesn't make mistakes. He understand what happens so it tends to give the right answer but any technology will be will not be so perfect so sometimes it's normal the recognition will fail if we take the example of the voice recognition okay it's normal okay nothing strange but we should remember to train the wizard also to do mistakes sometimes because we also want to test the reactions of the user to wrong the recognitions. Hmm? So the, the, we should remember not to make uh, not realistic expectations out of the technology. Uh, handling errors is one of the main problems for usability. And so if you have a prototype that by construction doesn't make errors or makes much less errors than the real system then you are missing a lot of uh, testing uh, on the critical functionality all the, all the error ending error recovery and so on hmm? so that's uh, or also something that uh, is able to understand any kind of question no voice interface or text interface will ever be able to understand a very complex question that you frame okay right now there are very <coughs> this kind of conversational interfaces or chatbots or whatever are very very stupid really stupid okay they are just tagging some words and recognizing some 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 template sentences you you really want you are you are not really having a conversation with these devices even the, ch the written chatbots or the voice uh, voice uh, system hmm? uh, because they are very very limited grammar hmm? which is a pity by the way because uh, there was a lot of research in understanding human language that was not uh, so the, the algorithms the technology for understanding language really exists and it's more advanced but then when they packaged the consumer devices they throw everything away and they they selected very very basic uh, uh, techniques without a real deep understanding of the text hmm? that's for they decided a different target of intelligence or simulated intelligence so people know that they are not intelligent they will not try to make uh, uh, strange requests so also the wizard should be able to target the right level of intelligence <coughs> so all the complexity lies on the shoulders of the wizard which is responsible for giving the right response in the right time with simulating the right level of intelligence and so on um so this is the the, the, mo the most di difficult part and then try to do all of this without being seen by the by the user at the, at the beginning so in um, if we try to put everything together what we have here is a spectrum of different techniques you remember storyboards is just one static page Purpose prototype is a sequence of dynamically or uh, ch changing uh, storyboards, screens. And then you can go digital, whether as a wireframe or as a color layout. 
and that can be also interactive so there will be basic interactivity like clicking or more ac uh, advanced interactivity that requires coding so if you want to simulate the behavior of a drop down uh, menu you need the backend code that will handle the, the event and will populate the menu hmm? so you need to start coding at this level but then you can start uh, while at the lower level you can start thinking about the main tasks uh, how the user interacts with the different pages so how the user understands moving from page to page with digital mockup you start thinking about the visual design so where to position the layout and so on and uh, where there's real interactivity then you can start also uh, quantify the usability so the error rate the speed the precision so all of the other kind of attributes so when once you move you are you will discover or you can work on different kind of aspects um, and uh, these are the tools actually and uh, uh, these blue boxes with blue balls uh, are the kind of uh, um, methodologies that can be used for exploiting those okay for example let's start from the end i have a final product or i have an interactive prototype maybe wizard of office or something like already interactive with some coding uh, i can really do some experiments with people that are quantitative quantitative and formally defined so I, I can check for example whether this button the size of the button is enough uh, too large too small by making different trials making dividing users in different groups uh, and testing the interface with different uh, characteristics with, uh, with different groups and so on so there are a whole set of methodologies to use this kind of prototypes to extract information mm -hmm. we already know about uh, observation about interviews while the user use the the, the, the prototype but, but as we go uh, we can uh, uh, use different uh, checks so for example the user scenarios uh, or, or observation so sh show uh, observing the user while experimenting these tasks so it's very easy no? to uh, just to observe and to note uh, or if you have some initial mockup even wireframe or maybe a start of a digital mockup uh, we can also do some real quick check so it's not a formal method we involve in tw 27 users uh, and and uh, uh, measuring the time their response time and so on hmm? but some quick checks at, the, at, the, at this level or some well, this is another technique we, we, we won't we won't we will not see all these uh, uh, techniques but just to to tell you that there are different uh, ways of uh, of using this prototype the prototype the prototype is just the tool how you use it depends on the user depends on the level and also depends uh, on the kind of information you, you can you can extract so all the in, you um, let's say human computer interaction books are filled with chapters that they will explain you how to deal with this kind of uh, different technique um, okay so that will conclude the first uh, or this chapter about uh, prototyping uh, I will just you give you a hint about what's next uh, so we'll uh, we'll nearly ready to close but uh, uh, I will just give you the introduction about the next uh, chapter so right now we have all the ways of creating intermediate version of the system so in uh, this picture that is called the four pillars of design there are also versions with three pillars so actually the number of pillars is something like uh, the researchers like to play with uh, what we already did is we know about uh, user interface requirements and uh, observation of the users so this is the first pillar understanding what the users need by observing them hmm? so this is the task that we already covered prototypes are the base for creating user interfaces okay these are all the development software tools so the tools that you will use for developing the user interface of course you need the to implement some algorithms but this is something that you already know how to implement an, uh, a tool with algorithms but prototypes are used to decide which algorithms and which, in which interface to build 
so we, we created the foundation for software development <coughs> there are other two uh, pillars one for creation and the other for evaluation of the interface so here the, the first pillar will tell me what the user wants the third one will tell me how to code it but what to code what to implement to satisfy these needs what are the criteria the guidelines for implementing a usable interface satisfying these needs rather than a interface that maybe will satisfy the needs but in a, but, uh, in a bad way probably or in a non-usable way so for no, it's not enough developing something we must develop a usable something so we should first need some criteria some rules that will help us develop something that we believe is useful is sorry is usable and then after we implemented it we can test it check really whether it's uh, usable or not so these two steps are the next two chapters one is about guidelines and theories and models something that starts from the human perception and human behavior and try to define a set of principles that we use uh, in designing the interface principles or even something more specific guidelines rules to follow do this and be happy don't do that hmm? and all these rules are grounded in some interaction theories of course we won't spend much time in the studying the theory but we spend uh, some time in understanding the the, 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 pr the um, principles and the guidelines and the chapter after that will be about the evaluation so we do our best to understand the right guidelines to develop a software we develop it or at least we develop a prototype or an advanced prototype and then we need to we check whether we did the right thing so the same uh, or si very similar rules that we use here for generation of the interface we use them for evaluation evaluation may be done in different ways the two main ways are with users or with experts with experts is easier because we are the experts so we create something we know the rules and after we created it we check the rules okay maybe i will not check the rules of my design we will swap them okay i check yours you check mine it's very cheap because it may be done inside the right the design team and may already find the main problems it's, we are in a very advanced stage okay we already have all the uh, requirements uh, we already follow all the principles so it should really work well but maybe there's something that we forgot and so we can ex uh, evaluate it in a in the expert group and then the next step will be to try it with real users so we go to the real usability testing so this that's the roadmap no, ahead of us you will see that there will be some repetition the criteria the principle for generating interfaces and the checklist for the expert evaluation the so-called heuristics are very similar of course mm -hmm. but one is framed in a generative way and the other is framed in a interrogative way okay does it apply or not so this is what will keep us uh, occupied in the next couple of weeks, starting for tomorrow with the guidelines.